You're listening to the Bumbling Yeti Podcast. Hey everyone, this is John at the Bumbling Yeti. This is episode number 30. Uh, today I have with me Ryan Riesbeck. He is a uh, former number one long driver in the world. Um, if you've ever watched any kind of long drive golf on ESPN, uh, you'll definitely recognize his face. Um, so uh, Ryan is with the um, Professional Long Drivers Association, correct? That's what the PL. ADA stands for? Yep, that's right. PLDA. Okay. So just a little background. Um, the reason, Ryan, I wanted to have you on here is I reached out to you because I see that you guys are trying to, or you're actually going to be taking long drive back to the Mecca, back to the Mesquite uh, Sports Park out in Nevada, um, which is where kind of, they almost kind of built that specifically for this sport. Uh, even though they have a lot of soccer fields out there, right? So um, I want to welcome you to the show. I appreciate you taking your time um, to to kind of talk me through what it is you guys are trying to do to help, I guess, kind of, for those of you who don't understand, the sport kind of hit a pinnacle uh, and then kind of dropped off as far as, I guess, TV goes and that kind of stuff. Um, and I've been following the sport for a long time. I used to compete. Uh, you'll see back here. That was one of my brands. That was actually was my brand. And now it's with shark attack golf, but, um, I'm just curious to see and understand what you guys are doing. I know you and, and Bobby Peterson are doing really big things for the sport. So, uh, with that being said, I'd like to hear more about it. Yeah. So, uh, to, to your point, um, we, we are taking it back to Mesquite because we feel like the, the world championship belongs in Mesquite. And you're right, that, that facility, the Mesquite Sports and Events Complex, that was built. Uh, somehow, Art Selinger, who uh, was the founder of the Long Drivers of America a group or association, I mean, they, they, he was somehow able to convince the city of Mesquite to put like $15 million into that facility and designed it so that you could use it as a long drive facility. So the, the practice range is right next to the competition uh, uh, fairway grid range, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, and it's just awesome. The, the, the view is spectacular. There's a mesa in the background. So you see like the red rock. Um, it's got an artificial tee box that's slightly raised. Uh, so it looks really nice and it's in the desert. And so you can start early and end late as far as the season goes so um so that's what we we really feel like that's where it belongs and that's why we're taking it back there so uh and then you also mentioned you know the long drive kind of hit its hit its peak and then struggled and i i would almost argue that it, it hit its peak in a different way maybe back in like 2008 9 10 before the recession and then uh, struggled for a few years. And then Golf Channel acquired it from Art Selinger. And I think that they did some pretty great things. Now, obvi obviously, it moved from being on ESPN to the Golf Channel. Um, but I think that Golf Channel really made some headway in, in bringing the, the sport back in front of golfers, in front of players, and, and kind of regenerated the audience a little bit. And unfortunately, this last year, was pretty rough with COVID. And uh, what, what happened with them is a lot of their funding was based on sponsorship. Right. And as the writing on the wall became apparent with COVID, a lot of these companies that were sponsoring and supporting Long Drive, you know, ha had to face the, the difficult question of what do they do with the, the sponsor dollar? And they, they, they told Golf Channel that there's too much uncertainty. Uh, they, need to, they need to keep their cash in reserve. And so that's what they did. So with that, you know, Golf Channel uh, essentially had to scrap, you know, scrap that sport, which is really sad looking back at it now because, I mean, long drive is actually one of the only sports where you can truly social distance, right? If you get, if right. you get within six feet of me when I'm when I'm playing, you're going to get hit probably and hurt, right. you know. So it's kind of unique in that I think that if they would have kind of, you know, if they had the funding and said, hey, let's let's move forward with this. It would have been the only live sporting events on TV for a few months. Right. Uh, 
I, I think it actually could have worked, but I mean, yeah, that's yeah, I think entertainment. Yeah, I think sports and entertainment in general took a big hit. Um, and you know, with you know bringing people from all over the place, it might have been a problem. But you know, it's I I look at this. I, I've had a I did a podcast I think where it was just me just talking about how I believe that this is like a big reset point for a lot of us, and I think it's a great reset point for long drive. So there's been a lot of rules changes from when when I competed at. Um, I never made it to Worlds. I I made it, but I left the regional too early, and someone they gave it to someone else. So that was as close as I ever got. Oh, that's too. But bad. um, yeah, but it's it's fine. Um. But yeah, I think, you know, the grassroots aspect of it, right? So the way that Art brought it up, I think you guys can actually take the lessons that, you know, have been learned along the way. And I mean, you're working with Bobby on this, right? So Bobby Peterson? Yeah, yeah. there's actually a few of us. So you may remember Landon Gentry. Yep. So so there's uh, Bobby Peterson, myself, uh, Landon Gentry, mm -hmm. and Josh Cassidy, who's a, who's a newer competitor. Um, I think he's been around for four or five years now. Uh, and then uh, Seamus Mannion, who is not affiliated uh, with Long Drive at all. He, he's a part of it. And then Robbie Peterson, who is Bobby's son, okay. is also a part of it. So that's the, the core uh, six uh, people that are working on it. And uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to work on this with a shoestring budget sure. right now. So until we start yeah. really generating some revenue. Right. Um, we're, we're kind of doing it all in-house. Well, that's kind of always been the challenge, right? So um, I don't know, how, how long have you been competing since what year, I guess, what year did you start? So my first uh, time ever trying to qualify was in August of 2010. Okay. And so this, this 2010, I guess, technically would have been my 11th season. And now this 2021 will be my 12th season. Uh, so I've been around for a, for a while. I'm, I'm 42. Okay. I'll be 43 in August. Right. And so I'm, I think there's, you know, Kevin Shook, you may have remembered, you may remember yep. Kevin, Kevin mm -hmm. Shook. I think he is like a month older than I am. And then okay. he and I are probably the oldest in the senior or the open division, which uh, 45 is the age cutoff for the senior division. So were so you, we're the two oldest. were you at the, um, you were at the first East coast classic, right? Uh, I, I don't know if it was the first, but I've, I've been to a lot of the East coast classics. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was at the first one that, um, that Moby had put together. I actually have a flag somewhere. I'm, I just moved, so I don't, can't find it all, but I have like, I spotted for Tim Burke and that was the first time I ever saw a human hit the ball that far. I mean, it was astounding. Yeah. And you know, Kevin Shook, I, I mean, he's, he's got to be what like 165 pounds <laughs> no no kevin is bigger than uh no he's probably six i think he's probably six three or four he's got to right. weigh 220 or something oh well i mean he looks he looks wiry but i remember being there and he i mean he smashes the ball i mean all those that's the difference i think in in the sport along drive right so you hear that a lot internally but you don't hear that a lot outside of the sport it's like you see you guys on the tee box and you're trying to, you know, like put a real hurt on your competitor. But at the end of the day, you guys all help each other. And I think that's something that people don't understand. Um, you're going to have an outlier here and there. Um, but it's, it really is a brotherhood. And, and, you know, you mentioned, so I'm 41, I'll be 42 this year, but I used to compete back. I started competing in 90, 98. So I competed from 98 to like 2002. And so that was in the days of like Ben Witter. And, and there was very few restrictions back then, right? So I remember I had a 55 inch shaft. I had, I think that was when Bang just came out. Like all the companies started to come out specifically for long drive. But I remember guys like the, the best you could do, like top of the line was Ping. When Ping had their team or, you know, like a Zeter golf, which, you know, is what Zubac was hitting, but. I remember they had, they would take a golf grip, turn it upside down and put a tee in the top and hit it like a, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That It's interesting you bring this up because there, there are some funky rules that, that are not there anymore. And they, you know, slowly transitioned out of that. So it was, it was less of a novelty and, and they, 
you know, they tried to kind of, uh, I, I guess, I don't want to say legitimize it, but but they That's tried they to bring did. it closer to like a regular golfer situation because right. I think that people just had no idea in the difference um, of, in distance. You know, like you just, and you get some guy, I, I think the video they always show is, uh, oh, what's his name out of Pennsylvania? I'm drawing a blank. He, Carl, he was Carl the, Walter. He, Carl Walter. Yeah, he was, yep. Ben Witter was his coach there, but. Yep. But I remember the one year Carl won it, like the first time. That's actually I watched that. I remember watching that, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember thinking Carl looked like he was thirty eight by the by the way. But um, I think he was like <laughs> twenty twenty two or something. And yeah. And anyhow, he. Uh, I remember like I always thought that something looked a little different, but I think he was using like a fifty two inch shaft. It was a fifty five inch shaft. Yeah, it was an AccuFlex yeah, fifty five inch shaft. Yeah, when he won it, and now. I mean, we're using, we're at USGA compliant equipment, mm -hmm. right? So our, our heads all have to be USGA compliant or conforming and the, the shaft length is conforming. So uh, even up to a few years ago, they were use, letting us use like a you know, half an inch to three quarters of an inch longer shaft. Right. I mean, we were kind of just like, why don't, you know, everybody thinks we're using this goofy equipment. Let's just, let's just go to right. regular, you know, USGA conforming standards. So that's what we right. did. Yeah. And people don't realize it, you know, I mean, it, it has to do like equipment has come a long way. I don't want to downplay that. Um, you know, Callaway really stepped up with a lot of their technology and, and bringing on, they had one of the biggest long drive teams and they may still, I don't, you know, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but some of these guys, I mean, they're, they're just so fast. They can hit a putter further than you can hit. Uh, most people can hit a driver. And um, you know, that's, that's the self-evident part. You know, I, I talk to people all the time. Like I'm, I'm more of a guy now where I went like 420 a couple times at, at competition, but that was back in the day. Now I'd rather sit on a par three and hit a bucket of ball, see if I can get close to the pin. Right. But, you know, to your, to your point, um, it, it did legitimize the sport and it went from a lot of the rules that are in the USGA now, as far as driver length goes and, you know, the, the club head volume or however many CCs it is now, I guess it's 460 still. I mean, I remember Integra had a 600 CC club head. Wow. You know, and it sounded like you're hitting an empty beer can. So it's just, yeah. it's well, just interesting the where, yeah. Yeah. The way, the way they measure, you know, like the core and the UCT, you know, they, a lot of that stuff. I mean, it, it was kind of like the wild, wild west, I suppose, for a while. They it was, would have to keep re, you know, raining things in. And, and uh, there were guys shaving the, the face plates. of the club. They were like facing the club to make it thinner for more trampoline. I mean, I saw balls literally get caved in. I'm, you still see that now from speed, but this was because people yeah. were messing with things. I mean, they were putting Vaseline on the face. Of the club. It was ridiculous what people were doing to try to win, but. Um, yeah. Yeah, the one the one year Jamie Sedlowski checked in like thirty five drivers at, at the World Championship. Yep. You know he he was swapping a driver out like every set, so right. sometimes twice. But, which yeah. Is, which is crazy, but. Right. So, as far as the the um, PLDA goes now, what are like what is the approach to it? Right. So if someone wants to to give it a shot. You know, the, the guy, in, the long guy in your group who's like, oh, I could hit it further than such and such. Where can they go to be shown that they're not really as long as they are? <laughs> well, so we, um, one of our goals is to take, to take it to the masses, right, as much as possible. And some of the restrictions in the past with long drive is, first of all, you have to find a, a facility that will actually be long enough to have a, a contest, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And even here in, in my state of Utah, I, there's like a hundred and something golf courses. And there's, there's basically three driving ranges that are long enough to even have, even think about having a competition. Right. And then even right. those driving ranges, if the weather is, is optimal for, for the direction you're hitting and the ground and things like that, even uh, two of those aren't even long enough. So they're, yeah. we're down to one in the whole state. And the only reason that golf course is long enough is because that's where we host our events mm -hmm. and the city approved them to extend the driving range 
like 120 yards. So is that where the Rockwell events were? It is. Yeah. That's okay. where we do the Rockwell. Okay. And that's coming, that's coming back this year, but, but yeah, I mean, it, it'll go like 483 yards. Yep. And the farthest that we've had somebody hit, I think Jim Waldron a few years ago hit at like 454 there. Okay. So but, are you with uh, elevation like, there too? We're like 12, 4,300. So okay. the elevation is high. Usually we do it in the summer or end of the summer. So the, the ground is firm, mm -hmm. but we always get the way the, the grid faces to the east into the mountains, which is, which is pretty cool because it, you know, as the sun's going down and the competition's ending, you can right. track the ball flight the whole way. The detriment is that the wind blows typically north and south. So you have a crosswind. We we rarely ever get tailwinds. Uh, if we got a tailwind, you know, I think we could have some guys going 480s. So okay, all right, cool. So so you're looking to take it to the masses. Are you looking? Are you going to go back to now? I don't know when you started. Was there still like regions, right? So I live in Pennsylvania. Actually, Carl Walter. I used to see Ben Witter all the time. He lived like maybe 40 minutes from here. Yeah. I, on a side note with Ben Witter, I have to tell you this. The first time I ever went to the World Championships and stayed, I think it was in 2011, mm -hmm. um, they, uh, he, he did this trick shot show. Best that was, ever. It was the most unbelievable thing. And, and he did this where he did like 30 different shots. Mm -hmm. And he starts out and he, he hit – and you didn't know he was doing this, but he just – starts out by by doing something like somebody throws him a ball and he hits it off the bounce yeah and, and you're watching this and he hits it like 300 yards like right down the middle of the fairway and, and then he he gets to where he's like standing on one of those bosu balls or not bosu balls the swiss balls yep yep somebody's throwing him a ball in the air bouncing it and then he's hitting it still 300 yards like right yep. down the down the yep. fairway and every trick Every trick, as it got more complex, he just he just like locked in and got better and better. It was the greatest. Yeah, I would say him and Dan Beaver. If you've ever watched Dan yep. Beaver, yep. I, yeah, I used to. I competed against him. Yeah, those two guys. You you just sit there and you're like, uh, this this isn't even possible. How they're how are they doing this? I don't know. Yeah, Macho Man Trevor uh, can Savage. He has a great yep. show too. So yeah, but, but anyhow. Um, yeah, what, what we want to try and do is we still have three stages. We have local qualifying, stage one. Stage two is regional qualifying. Uh, and then stage three is obviously the world championship. So right. with that, that's that's kind of the, how the, the world championship works. Within that, we're also trying to, to uh, promote a professional tour. So with these regional events, this year we're scheduled for eight regional events and a world championship here in the United okay. States. And actually, one of the events is in Canada, so in Port Rowan, Ontario, which is uh, it's like an hour west of Niagara Falls. So beautiful okay. area, especially in the in the summertime. But yeah, they used to do um, an international event up there, didn't they? It was they had one there, and then they had one in Mexico. I know Bobby was all part of the. Yeah. Uh, were you part of Team USA as well? Yeah. So that's going to be that's Rick and Bill with the ILDC. Right. Yep. And they're they're actually the uh, the organization that's running that event in. The, uh, Port Rowan, Ontario. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. So they're good, good guys. They've been, I think they've run like 15, 16, uh, you know, years up there and they do the, 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 uh, world match play or the world team championships and all that. Yep. So yep. good guys. Um, but yeah, so, so along with that, you know, qualifying and that we also have the, the professional tour that we're trying to do. So we do our tour events in conjunction with regional events. So the idea right now is like on a weekend, we would do Friday's local qualifying, uh, like a last chance local qualifying. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday would be a regional event and then Sunday would be the tour event. So okay, that's probably going to adjust and modify as this grows. We would like to have the ability to, to incorporate some pro-ams with that so that, you know, we can help, you know, bring exposure to the sport. Sure. Right. Help, help drive some revenue to, you know, increase purses and whatnot. So. But for you this year, that's what we're planning. Um, you you asked earlier, you know, like if somebody wants to get into it or somebody wants to even just try it, how can they do it? Well, we've actually, we've thought a lot about this and we feel like it's time to incorporate technology into this first stage of qualifying. Mm -hmm. Because the, in my mind, one of the, the biggest obstacles to somebody trying this 
is they don't think they can do it. And so if they're, if they're you know, doubting themselves, they're not going to drive, you know, 10 hours to Albuquerque like I did for right. my first call. No, I, trust me, I did the, basically the entire East Coast. Yeah. For a, so, I mean, a three-minute set. But that's an obstacle that a lot of people just, they're not going to get there. So what yeah. we've done is we've teamed up. Um, number one, we've teamed up with About Golf. And uh, okay. in, with, a, with About Golf simulators, um, in the next couple of weeks, let me put a plug in. Uh, if you haven't already, go to our webpage, prolongdrivers.com. I'll put it Scroll down the bottom down here as well. About yeah. halfway, enter your email address. Um, if you put that in and, and, and uh, sign up for our emails, you'll get an email from us. You have to click on that email that says you accept emails from us. So we're trying our best to, you know, to be uh, legitimate digital marketers and not sure. spam everybody. So, so be sure to accept, uh, accept us in that email. But if you'll do that in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have a, a big announcement with about golf and how we're doing qualifying with them and through them. Now, uh, I just talked with with Tom Uphold from Family Golf and Games Today in Memphis. They're our second event. Okay. And he's going to do qualifying with technology as well, but he has a top tra top tracer system at their facility. So they're going to use top tracer. Okay. Now, the reason this stuff's important is because in the old days, you would have to find a facility, then you would have to like lay out, you know, the the grid just like right. they kind of do a football field, right. except it's two and a half times as long, typically sometimes yep. longer, you know, which is a lot of work and you, you have to have a big staff, right? When I would host local qualifiers, we would try and get as many people there and qualify for multiple regionals. And so we were doing like three and four players on the tee at a time. Right. And when we did that, you'd have to have a staff of like 12 to 15 people. And, and, and over like a two or three day period of time, that's really hard to do. If we use technology in the first stage, it allows players to give it a chance and there's not a big downside to them uh, trying it and failing or not doing well. Right. In fact, what we're, we have the belief, or at least I do, that once people try it, they love it. They enjoy it. It, it happens and, to everyone I know. Yeah. And, and it's almost, I don't want to say addicting, but there is just something, especially for guys who are former athletes, I, I like, I'm willing to admit I'm a former college baseball player. Look, we're all still athletes. We're none of us are former. We'll always it yeah. might it's in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, in my mind, I will always be an athlete. But but right. this to me, like my I didn't play professional baseball. Uh, I had aspirations to, but I wasn't good enough. Yep. Uh, but when I got introduced to this, I was like I said, I was I think I was 32 years old, just turned mm -hmm. turned 32, and uh, just started you know trying it, and I loved it. I would gave yep. me something to to work towards, to practice, to go to the gym, to work out for. I mean, I was kind of at a point in my life before that where uh, I, I was not really active. And so I had put on a few LBs and was, was going down that path. So yeah. I, I kind of feel yeah. like, you know, for me, this serves multiple purposes, but I love competing, gives me motivation to work out and train. Uh, and uh, I've traveled the world doing this. Yeah. And I uh, want some money. Who, if I'm, if I'm in the black or red, I don't know, but all I know is I, I'd never traveled before this. And now I've, I've been to China and Portugal and Mexico and Dubai. And I mean, I, I'm hoping to go to Japan this year. We've, we've got an affiliate in Japan that's trying to get us over there to come, you know, see what they're doing. And right. that's, that's one of the other things that we're trying to do um, with, you know, we know that we're here in the states and to build it here somebody's got to do that so we're taking on that role but we also feel like one of the reasons why long drive has failed in the past is we had this one central organization and everybody was just waiting for them to to, to set the schedule to do this and that well we want to be the organization that is working with other organizations so that they can establish long drive in their area so right so right now Great relationship with with some players in Australia, New Zealand, uh, Japan. I mentioned South Korea, South Africa, Europe, uh, Canada. I mean, we that's pretty much those are pretty much the the strongholds of Long Drive, right there. That's and you have ambassadors there too, right? So you have like you know all the you know you have Joe Miller who 
you know, in the UK, who was, you know, one, just an amazing, uh, you know, amazing at the sport. And from what I never met him in person, but I hear he's, he's a really great guy too. So. Oh, he's um, a dope. No, he's. Yeah. But you have, I mean, Joe, you have Joe is a great guy. You have these, you know, you talk about, you know, whether you're in the black or the red or whatever. And, and like, one of the things that like Ed Henson is still a good friend of mine. Um, and that was all through, just having conversations, you know, via text and all that other kind of stuff. And he and William actually came up here to help me out with an event um, in Atlantic City where William competed against Brad Skupeka. And, you know, those two went ahead. I think William beat him by like maybe like two yards. I was a spotter. I was scared out of my life. I was hiding behind trees and stuff. But, <laughs> you know, it's uh, you have that you have that reach, that international reach just through you know, hitting golf balls. And I think that's that brotherhood I'm talking about. And even, you know, even the women you have, um, Phyllis Meddy's from New Zealand, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah she has and, that reach too. And and there are some new players that, you know, there's a, a gal out of, out of Thailand. Um, I'm going to butcher her name. We, her name is my Dai Che Dai Che Teapot. Is her my, if I, my, forgive me if you hear this anyways, <laughs> we were hanging out with her last year at the PGA show yep. and uh, she played golf at Wake Forest. And I mean, she, she can move it. Uh, mm -hmm. Kanani Lodge, who um, I think she's like 24 years old. And uh, anyway, she, she lives up in uh, Washington state right now. Yep. And, and she, I mean, she's like 190, you know, plus ball speed. Yep. Um, it, you know, not even to, to mention, um, Chloe Garner, the current, you know, rank the reigning. Yeah, she's, uh, she's originally from Australia, from right? South, she's from South Africa. South Africa, I mean, right? Okay. Yeah, and in the European, they've they've got two or three gals that are real good that can move it too. So, I mean, yeah. they're they're out there, and it, I'm a firm believer that there's a lot more people out there. It's almost to a detriment, right? I'll give you a perfect example: Martin Borgmeyer, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, you guys know he's a full beard, long drive. Uh, is what he, but, but that guy, he is a machine, right? Yeah. He shows up to the sport in the sport and he's like in, in a relatively short amount of time, he's one of the fastest guys in the world, if not the yeah. fastest, right? Like yeah. you've got, I mean, there's right now, there's uh, probably the four guys that really stand out as far as speed, you know, Kyle Berkshire, mm -hmm. uh, Martin Borgmeyer, Justin James, Josh Koch, uh, those guys are all when they're all like on all cylinders. They're all mid two twenties up to like two thirty two. So I used to compete against Justin's dad, Jerry, who oh yeah yeah is <laughs> an animal. I mean, he, he ripped. I think at Ben, I think it was at Ben's event in um, the two thousand two Summer Nationals. Jason Zubak was there. Um. And that was like the big draw. And I think Jerry was there and then he like he teed off and then he ripped his shirt off and then he started hitting balls with no shirt on. Like, you know, he's just, he's just a wild man. And, and you, so they're the things I remember. Right. So they, these are back in the, I yeah. mean, I forget, I can't even remember who won Chad, Chad, someone won that one, but the, he won a, he won a, a Chevy avalanche. Like that was, that was crazy yeah. back in the day, but yeah, those those guys are crazy fast. I mean, I've seen some fast guys, but you know that Kyle Berkshire is just it, the the club head speed he generates is ridiculous. I don't even know how he can square it up, to be yeah. honest. Uh, of those four guys I just mentioned, Justin James has comp been competing the longest, and his yep. first event was at the East Coast Classic, I think five years ago or four years. Yeah, ago. I think it was the second five, one. Five. 2000 maybe it's 2016 anyways i mean all of those guys are relatively newcomers so like i said i i am firmly in the in the department of there's a lot of people out there yeah. that could do this that For just sure. don't even know because they haven't tried it yet yeah so yeah. and so are you, are you i know about the sport right so i'm i was in it at one point i was literally in the sport i had a company that was related to the sport um and then all of a sudden it just kind of went like it ended up to me 
it got away from what it was about, right? So it became like glitzy, it became glamorous. And I think it all started when they had the the event at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. That kind of, yeah, that, that, turned, that turned me off. Although I was happy for Tim. Uh, I was disappointed for Joe because I think that was the year Joe, when they asked him what he was going to do with the money, he said he's going to buy a Ferrari. Like he had no qualms about it. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to see this go back to kind of a grassroots kind of event. And I think with you guys doing it and, and look, if there's any way I can help here in the Philadelphia area, I'm all about it. I hope you guys out. I have a lot of connections here. Um, and even as far as, you know, like a tour event, if you guys want to do that, there's, there's a ton of golf courses around here. And, um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what it is you guys do, how you do it. Um, cause I'm sure you guys learned a lot of stuff that, that as, as the athletes yourselves doing, you know, performing at these events, um, what you didn't like, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it also gives you, you know, as we started this, uh, organization, it's given us, uh, a really good insight to what, you know, what art was doing. And I remember sometimes thinking like, why do they do that? And now I realize, oh, that's why they did it. Yeah. And, and same thing with the golf channel. Um, if you look at the amount of money that the golf channel put into it, I mean, they were, they were trying, they were giving it a really good shot at, at getting it going. Right. Um, and, and like I said, they were very successful in getting a lot of eyeballs on it. There are probably more people aware of it now than there ever have been. Mm. And so like to just you know, you know, pick up a ball and carry it forward from what you know those organizations have done and the world's changing we we feel like with technology if we can get more people trying it um that will help that'll help fuel it but um it all it, it all comes down to money really at this right. point right now and yeah and uh, so our our plan is to not go out and try and you know land million dollar sponsorships our, our plan right now is to prove our concept and then go out and try and find those sponsors that, that will benefit from partnering with us. Right. And, uh, and we think that the golf world's changing. I, especially, I mean, you know, with COVID, it, it kind of killed some industries, yep. but if, if you look at the golf industry, I mean, it boomed, it was, you know, what could people do? Right. It was the only thing you could do. Right. Yeah. And so I, I mean, at my driving range, you know, that I practice, they had T slots set up that you would have to book in advance mm -hmm. uh, to get a slot on, you know, I mean, to, yeah. get a, to get a, a spot on the, on the T box mm -hmm. and uh, junior golf programs are up. I think that a lot of golf has seen a real uptick Yep. and, you know, with other things happening in the sport, you know, like Bryson DeChambeau, um, the, the long ball is appreciated more now than, than it ever has. So if we right. can, if we can kind of, you know, take advantage of, of the, the positives that are coming along with COVID, I think that, that will, you know, it'll help out. So, but in the end, uh, we're definitely a fledgling uh, organization and we're doing our best to, you know, to grow and develop, but we, the, we need players. But so the biggest thing I would say is if you or somebody, you know, as long, get them to come out, get them to oh, try. Look, I'm calling so many people out like personally, when I put this out, I'm going to, and you know, I'm going to tag everyone like you, you know, boom, 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 check this out because you, to your point, um, you just don't know. Like, I know that there are guys, I mean, when I went to compete, I went to hope that the other guy missed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, you just have to have a different kind of mindset and, you know, everyone has a bad day. I mean, not, you know, some guys don't, David Mobley really never seemed to have a bad day. That guy could hit it no matter the wind conditions, you know, ground conditions. Um, but, you know, to your point, if you want to give it a shot, you guys, it sounds like you guys are giving it, um, giving everyone an option to go and not have to drive a tremendous amount of miles, get a hotel, do all that kind of stuff. And if you can utilize the technology, you know, why not do it? Yeah. And I think, uh, the use is, you know, some people, maybe if you're old school and a purist, you'd say, oh, that's not the same. But, but, but in reality, you know, if you, if you qualify, you know, through a simulator or a 
local qualifier that's done on a track man or a top tracer or whatever. They're all hitting in the same exact conditions. Yeah. Yeah. You, you show up to a regional event and I mean, if you qualify through a local, you belong in the regional. That's all there is yep. to it. Is right. You, you, you can't, uh, I mean, if you beat three or four or five or 10 guys to get that lo local qualifying spot, I mean, you've earned it. And that's what it's about. Players will show up and, and not have a lot of experience. Um, and they'll realize that if they work on it just a little bit, you mentioned David Bobley, right? Was David Mobley ever the fastest guy in the world? He was He was never the fastest guy in the world. No, he's never even close, right? He was, but that guy could flight the ball with whatever the conditions were. Yep. He could, and maybe he would be stuck if he had to carry it the whole way. But I mean, he, if he needed, if he could roll it out, he would flight that ball to roll it out and he would roll it out, you know, as good or better than anybody. And so he was always competitive. He's a multi-world champion, multi, yep. you know, time world champion. Yep. Uh, so you don't, it's not always about speed. Uh, in fact, a lot of times the faster you are, uh, if you don't focus on flighting the ball, it's, it's a detriment to you because you it'll feel like it'll balloon and it'll go right or left. Yeah. And you feel like, no, the answer is I just need to swing harder. Well, mm -hmm. no, it's not. You need to hit it better. So if you're in a but, groove and you swing yeah. hard, if you're in a groove and you get in a real good groove, you're going to hit the ball a mile. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's good. I'm I'm interested, and like I said, I will put all. I'll actually link you. I'll in the bottom of this when I go through editing, I'll put your website and probably your your logo on there as well. Um, so I actually thought you guys were going now. So Bobby built like a ridiculous. We'll just call it a training facility at his at his house. Yeah. Yeah, it um so he's very resourceful is what I would say. So he sure. has like I don't know, 82 acres or something. He's got a chicken farm and it's out in the middle of North Carolina. And I mean in the middle of North like in the in the sticks. It's out yep. there, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh but he's he's adding on. He's he's got plans for another building. Uh but right now he's got a, an indoor facility that's like a 60 by 40 that has a golf and about golf simulator. It's got bays that you can open up. He's got a practice tee box out front. He's got yep. a warm up range in front of the building. I mean, his grid goes like 465 yards. If you can hit it to the end of his grid in uh, in North Carolina, I mean, that's like the hitting 500 class. yards. Yeah, at, yeah. In Mesquite, I mean, it's right. You know, but he he uh, he does lessons, you know, his, his company is the one-stop power shop. So you could buy uh, equipment from him through him. He's yep. a Callaway distributor. So he can get you anything Callaway. He's a club builder, club fitter. Um, I, I talked to the guy, he, he'll fool you too. Like people will talk to him and he'll, he'll put on this uh, country boy, you know, thick Southern yep. accent and, mm -hmm. and you, you won't, you won't, you know, you'll think, you know, who is this guy? He's supposed to be somebody, but. He knows his stuff. He plays yeah. dumb a lot. So like yeah. when people, when, when people are trying to, to test him, he's all, I mean, he, he was in the military and he was trained in psychological warfare. And sure. I think he yeah. uses it a lot. Right. Yeah. 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 I've, I've no doubt. I've met him a few times. He's a, he's a great guy. And, and, and obviously he's one of the coaches out there. I know he's coached Landon for a long time and um, you know, they would always talk to, you know, everyone always thanks Bobby Peterson, right? Because he's just, he's that guy. He's always at the forefront and he likes to compete too, but he's always out there trying to make other people better. And I think that's one of the things that people may or may not understand, you know, um, uh, probably about, about him. And I don't know him very well, but also everyone else, you know, you guys are out there. You might have, I'm sure you've had five, 10 guys out there and you're all trying to help each other get longer because it's, that's what you do. You know, so the brotherhood strong. Sorry yeah, we, that. I mean, we feel like, you know, there's room for people, you know, like you said earlier, there, there's some outliers. There's maybe some guys that, that maybe don't get along, but I think in general, for the most part, long drivers are accepting of newcomers. Yep. Um, they're once, you know, once they get to know you, they love you. And so if you come out, if you're a newcomer and you come out to these events, um, you know, uh, be humble, but don't be afraid to talk to people. Right. Um, 
you know, what your perception of, of a lot of these people are maybe from television or whatever, you know, I, I would say is, is probably not super accurate sometimes yeah. because um, everybody wants to see the sport grow. So when somebody, when you get a newcomer, uh, everybody's welcoming to the newcomer. Sure. If they're not, yeah. then they're a jerk and you don't. Right. You don't, you don't <laughs> no one wants to deal with you in stuff. general in life, right? So, yeah. well, that's good. So, the, so the, I, have like you, you talked about there's that, that brotherhood, you know? Right. And I, mm-hmm. I think that's really true. Uh, we get together before the events, we get together after the events. Um, on social media, we have, you know, chat groups and, right. and whatnot where we're connected all, all year round. So, it's, yeah. I think it, it's a pretty good, pretty good deal. So, right. So as far as regions go, do you have an idea of what those regions are going to be? Yeah. So we, what we, we've kind of changed. Uh, it's not necessarily specific regions. So if, if we go to the website and look at the uh, schedule, the first event is this uh, March 4th through the 7th in Mesquite. The second event is in Memphis, Tennessee. We tried to kind of spread it out by region. Okay. So we're going, uh, you know, Mesquite, Nevada, Memphis, Tennessee, Columbia, South Carolina. We go back to uh, to Mesquite in May, and then in June we're in uh, just out in LaSalle, Colorado, just out of Denver. Then we go back east to Port Rowan, um, which I said is just uh, you know east of Niagara Falls, there near Buffalo. Uh, and then we stay there in the Northeast for uh, uh, in Portland, Connecticut. Um, there's a guy named Chris Cody. He's got a, a a new driving range. It's got some you know new technology and whatnot. He's got Top Tracer there, but but he's got a, a new driving range that is long and flat. And uh, and we're excited to to partner with you know with Chris on this because uh, it's. I felt like for a while there, there's been a need for more, uh, you know, more events in the Northeast. So, so we'll, yeah, you know, look, we'll be there at the end of August. I'm, uh, I'm in Pennsylvania here. Yeah. I'm just, I'm right here in Philadelphia and it was always hard. I used to, I would have to go either to New Jersey or there was one event. I actually just drove past it not too long ago, but it looks like they let the trees growing at the end of the grid. And um, I used to have to go up to, I was up in like Syracuse and, um, like Northern Jersey. So it wasn't very easy to get to, but you know, I know there's, um, yeah. there's a, there's a golf place here. It's like a, I forget what it's called and, and I'll, I'll send you a link to it. And if you have any interest, let me know. I'm, I'll be more than happy to facilitate for you guys down here. Cause I think this is a big market for that. Yeah. Well, we're, I mean, we're excited. So we try to kind of spread it out the area where I feel like we, we need more events is in the South because it seems like in the Southeast, there's a lot of players. Yep. So I, I, I'm hoping that at some point we can uh, move some of the events, uh, you know, maybe do an event in Arizona earlier in the year mm-hmm. and then, uh, and then, uh, you know, be able to add an event in the South at some point. The problem with the South is that it rains a lot in the spring. Yeah. And so it, weather can be a little bit dicey and then when you get too late into summer it is so hot and sweaty but yeah but we may have to just do that you know we may have to just do it i I think that's the the one region and then for some reason you know we gotta i think we gotta find something in texas um you know a good friend glenn wilson jr down there in houston uh we gotta find a way to get an event down there and then california is so grossly underrepresented in long drive it's amazing there's so many people there and the you know so many uh golfers but for whatever reason it's it's hard to find a a place there to do an event well they're all moving to texas now so you could just have one big event in texas right (laughs) and they're moving to texas arizona utah and idaho it's yeah (laughs) yeah they're they're, uh they're on the outs so yeah yeah i hear you we would yeah, we would love to. I mean, we would love to to have the problem where there's too many people that want to compete, and we got to come up with more events. Yeah, I mean that's our dream, right? And uh, I'll I'll give you an idea too of where this could go. Um, we've done you know some events. We've been to events in in Dubai, and uh, the Jumeirah Golf Estates has a facility there that we've done an event, uh, two events there. It was fantastic. They were very accommodating. 
Um, I would like to get back to to uh, Dubai. I'd like to get back to or go to Japan. Uh, I think there's, uh, I mean, the golf market in Japan is like 25, uh, 24 or five percent of the golf market in the world. Yep. So for for not such a you know large country, there's a tremendous population of of players in Japan, and I mean, it, you know, we uh, we we partnered up with uh, Shinji Matsutani who's the owner of the uh, uh, Pro Dracon Association, which is the, you know, long drive group there. And um, I mean, it, it's just, it's amazing what, what they've been doing uh, to grow. Uh, you have to take a test to be a part of their association. Like, you don't, really? you don't just sign up and pay a fee. Like it's, it's serious business over there. Yeah. Um, and so he's, he's doing everything he can. And uh, anyhow, uh, it, it's it's grown. I think it's going to take some time, but we're we're hoping that uh, in a matter of you know a couple of short years that that there will be a lot more money and we'll have kind of a world tour where we we travel around and have three or four major events throughout the year and uh, you know bigger purses for the players. And uh, but I would love to get you know Europe's Europe's got some great venue. I mean, we did one in in Mexico City at uh, La Hacienda, which is I think it's like the oldest active uh uh country club or golf course in mexico and i mean it was just a, the most beautiful facility in uh this super accommodating and that's at like 50 or that's at like seven thousand feet too right yeah so so you can have some really fun at that high yeah. you know a lot of fun at that high elevation but right anyways that's that's kind of our vision is uh you know if we can get the right partners uh to go along with us and and make it happen we hope to to really put it you know take it through the roof so okay so when when is the uh when is the world championship what when is that again so it's the last week in september okay it starts uh let me just make sure the dates are right uh, september 22nd through the 29th okay through the 29th that's at the mesquite sports and events complex um and uh, 128 open division players, and we'll have 32 ladies division and 32 senior division players. Um, the ladies division and the and the senior division, um, we are going to announce here in a couple of weeks um, that the qualifying that we're doing through them is through the About Golf Simulator. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the ladies division uh, and the senior division, we're going to do like a month long qualifying session, and you can. Uh, you know, come and try and qualify for the world championship. And uh, you don't have to do regionals at that point. Um, we're trying to to get it to the point where we can do a ladies competition, a senior competition and an open competition at these tour events. Mm -hmm. So um, we can grow, we can expand, but we got to have that, that player participation to do it. And uh, hopefully people will feel more comfortable traveling this, uh, right. you know, here in the next month or two, hopefully with vaccines in the warmer weather, et cetera. Right. Um, so, so you're not, you're not going to just take like an aggregate of like the longest people and say, these are the people that are going to come. It's going to be by event. So if I went to a local event here and I'm the longest at three 30 on a simulator and there's a guy who's three eighty on another simulator, I'm still, I still placed here and he placed there. Is that how that's going to work? So, so on the about golf simulator, we can set the conditions so that everybody who's competing in that qualifier mm -hmm. is up against the same conditions. Okay. And so we will take the, the it, it'll be open for a week long. So oh, you okay. can go in and do okay. your attempt and, and then we'll take the top, you know, right now the plan is to do one in 10. Um, that's, that's how our numbers break down. So every 10, uh, people that sign up for a local qualifier, one of those people is going to advance to the regional. So, okay. And you'll have three chances uh, in a week. You can go in and sign up there. There'll be three different local qualifying sessions each week. So if you go to, you know, session a and you compete and you want to try it again, you can register for session B and then session C and they'll all run uh, simultaneously. So and then okay. after that week, we'll, it'll uh, reset and there'll be three new local qualifiers that you can enter that week. Got it. Got it. That's okay. how the open division is going to work. So. Okay. All right. Cool. So um, I had another question. It just kind of escaped me, but um, w are you doing any kind of like media 
like are you going to have like you know someone is there any expectation for like videoing there or are you looking for partners in that aspect or is there anything like to to be maybe record and just have like that social media or media presence so we we do some of that right now uh i think the next level that we need to take it to is to where we work with the production company and do a, like a tape delay right. uh, broadcast. Okay. Um, ultimately, we want to get to where we're putting the sport, um, you know, at least the towards the end of the competition, live on TV um, and live stream it, you know, at the same time. So yep. um, we've, you know, we we've been researching the cost to do that, and and any live production uh, is really expensive. I mean, right. you're talking at minimum, you know, somewhere around two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars to do a live hour, one hour uh, televised event. Right. And, and that's uh, and, and like I, I mean, that's that's just to have the the satellite trucks there to have, you know, the the sound, the graphics, yeah. all of that stuff mm -hmm. connected. Uh, lighting is a whole different story. So. Um, so we, you know, we hope to get there someday, but it's got to be the right partner, and uh, sure. obviously, it's got to provide the, you know, the juice has to be worth the squeeze sure. uh, for somebody yeah. to get involved with it. And so we want to, we want to try and build our, our platform with that in mind that someday we'll have, you know, some partners that are that are willing to throw some money at it and grow and develop it. So. It's it's tough going from the sport to the business, right? It's real tough. <laughs> it is, yeah. And my performance on the tee box since we've started doing this has declined. <laughs> so. You have a different kind of stress. You're not, you're not clear minded, yeah. just worrying about hitting the ball. You're worried about all the other stuff that's involved with that. Yeah. And it wears you down. Like that's, you don't think about that, but um, when, when players show up to an event, usually somebody's been there, you know, for two or three days, getting things prepared. Um, even and if it's not even like on site preparations, it's, you know, things, you know, just making sure that everything and people are in place that when it does, you know, happen and that can be stressful and it can, you know, be late nights and early mornings. And so by the yeah. time the competition rolls around, uh, you, you got no legs and uh, you, you maybe look good for a few sets and then you, you tire out pretty quick. You've been eating cookies, just trying to keep going. And then you get there yeah. and all your, your energy's all gone. I get it. Trust me. Sucking down Dr. Peppers. Right. Uh, so I guess my, one of my last questions I have, so I am, I'm pretty good friends with Brian Steffen from the uh, ALD, right? So the amateur long drive, you guys going to try to get associated with them at all to maybe bring like maybe their champion out to see, you know, as an amateur status or. So we have, um, I think there's some confusion on our relationship with amateur long drive. And uh, some people uh, have this thought that maybe we're uh, against them. Um, our our perspective is from the Professional Long Drivers Association is we formed the the association so that we could have player representation that we would be able to 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 further the players' interests. Yep. So from a player's perspective, uh, if Jeff Gilder and and Ed Lapierre and those guys are hosting events. And they're taking the time and effort to do that. Um, we're not going to discourage players sure. from going to that. Like, like we, I mean, all the better, right? The more people they can get involved in their sport or their organization, we feel like that will only help us. The more exposure that we can can also produce, that will that will help their uh, organization as well. So, um, I don't think that we will we will necessarily like do a merger uh, and combine. Their focus, I know that they have the XLD, which is a professional, um, uh, they're kind of their, their pro side of long drive. Mm -hmm. um, their bread and butter is, is amateur and they're good at it. They're good at finding new athletes right. and yep. new players. And, and our, our goal, or not our goal, but I guess our focus right now is to keep that elite level of, of long drive going. And um, so that's kind of, we're, we're focused on that and they're focused more on amateur and development. Um, so we, uh, I mean, you know, they'll come out to our events. I know like Bobby's been to some of their events. I've competed in, in one of their events. 
Um, it's a little bit different. Like their format of play is a little bit different sure. than ours. Yeah. yeah. And Everyone's so, going to put their own flavor on, right? Yeah, I get that. Yeah. So, so, but I mean, like, you know, in the end, uh, we, we are not anti uh, amateur long drive at all by any means. And um, we are pro long drive in whatever yep. form mm -hmm. that is. Um, and like I said, we, we just want to, we want more people competing. Sure. You know, obviously we want them competing with our organization, but if right. uh, they start, um, we've had, we've had numerous people that started in, in ALD and moved, moved over yep. and some that do mm -hmm. both. So, you know, like from, uh, from our perspective, it's a win for us and a win for them. And we, for sure. we wish yeah. them, you, we wish you want to get bodies best. in there, right. You want to get bodies in there. You want to get people to come in and, um, you know, be, you know, be exposed to that. And then, there's nothing bad that will come of it because you're around people, you know, like you, for example, just someone coming and talking to you who's been on the ESPN spotlight in the, you know, or the golf channel spotlight or, and all that kind of stuff doing interviews. And, you know, that that's a different kind of pressure, right? So you can take the guy who hits the grid every single time and you put him in a stadium atmosphere. He's, he might not even be able to tee the ball up and I've been there, you know? Oh Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's important and, and I hope that everyone who listens to this understands that, you know, when you go out and you, you try to, you know, if you're interested in trying to do this, you know, introduce yourself to people because not only will you get, um, you know, your, I guess your nerves will be settled a little bit, but you also get exposure to the right equipment and how to get measured and, um, you know, maybe even, you know, someone that can help you along the way. So um, I think it's important and I'm Ryan, I'm so excited to see how you guys end up getting this to take shape. And I hope that 2021 is good to you guys and is good to the sport because it's needed. And I can't imagine the amount of resources and, and, um, you know, equity you guys have already put in out of your own money. Cause you've, there's no way you made money yet at all. So, so we, we are this much in the black. <laughs> okay. So, well, that's good. That's good. So we, we're, we're proud of that. Now uh, we're also taking step. Like we also had a certain scenario last year where we did all of the contests at the one stop power shop. Right. So we had a facility that Bobby was contributing that didn't cost us money. Right. Um, you know, we, we, you know, we do have, you know, membership fees um, that we ask players to, to do uh, to pay to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but we also, you know, like we also pay a hundred percent of the entry fees. So, uh, you know, if the entry fee is $600 for a tour event, we pay out $600 times, however many competitors there are. Right. We don't keep any of that money. In fact, sometimes we have to, we're in the negative because, you know, people will pay using a method that costs us money. Right. Yep. So we're trying mm -hmm. to find ways to, to get players to pay through ways that, that don't cost us money but um, still is convenient for both parties. So for sure. For sure, like for sure. That. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we're trying to, uh, we're trying to, you know, put the horses first and not the cart. But if I could mention a couple of quick things before. Sure. Yeah. I know we're kind of running low on time. No, I got, I got all the time in the world, buddy. Trust me. So I, so there's a couple of things that I would mention. Um, first of all, if you have any questions about long drive or you want to get in touch with us, Feel free to reach out to me, uh, just Ryan Respect. That's my handle for everything, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, DM me. Uh, if you go to our website, my phone number is one of the websites on the phone number. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I, I'm an open book. I'll talk to you. I don't have a problem, you know, with whatever it is. Uh, obviously, uh, I don't do, like, online lessons and stuff like that. But I do have an instructional video. It's called Driving Smarter, Driving Farther. And so if anybody, it, it's really good for like junior golfers or anybody just trying to get into the sport. Uh, it's 90 bucks. You buy it, you own it. That's, I, I tell people all the time, like if you, if you want to get some instruction and you don't want to pay like an, a monthly membership or go see a, you know, a, a coach for whatever, that driving smarter, driving farther, uh, it's an ex-pollination company production. Um, that is the most bang for your buck right there, like hands down. And um, so I'll just, I'll, I'll tell you right now, if you want some instruction at your own pace, it's a masterclass, 
do that. But I'll put all the free. links and everything in this as well. Okay, yeah. yeah. But feel free to, to call, you know, reach out to me, reach out to the PLDA, uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. I don't even know if we do Twitter. If Twitter feels like... If there is, I'm, I'll I'm find it. I'm in this generation gap where like <laughs> Twitter feels too old to me, but TikTok is like way too young. Right. So I'm, I'm in this like, and I don't like the Facebook nearly as much as I like Instagram. So yeah, that, I hear that's you. where I am my generational... Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. However, if you could get a young guy or even, you know, someone's kids to do TikToks for you guys, you know, oh, it's, yeah. it's crazy how viral they can go. Yeah. Why well, I see all these guys yeah. at, you know, at Top Golf, you know, like, oh, they're hitting a the ball over the net. It's like, okay, like it's you're three stories up. It's really not that big of a deal. But yeah, yeah, yeah it's still pretty cool. Um, All right. So let me ask you this one question. What what kind of sponsorships are you looking for? And if someone's interested in um, being a participant in a sponsorship role, who do they get in touch with? Do they get in touch with you as well? Yep. Yeah. Reach out to me. Um, what, what I would say, I'm a businessman, you know, in my non, my non long drive career as well. And so for me, I have a hard time asking people for money and not being able to deliver some sort of value. Right. And so, so for me, if it's going to be a long-term relationship, that's going to benefit both parties and, and not feel like somebody's getting ripped off. Uh, I, I feel like to me, at least, you know, it's got to jive with kind of what we're doing, mm-hmm. but I think, you know, something like a drink company would work or anything yep. that, you know, is, is golf, uh, golf related or just outdoor related or sport related. Right. Um, you know, like I, I just think like a beverage company would go go hand in hand. Sure. Really well. Um, it, it's hard to do like a golf manufacturer, um, just because you know, like, like if 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 you're the whatever company sponsoring it, and the guy from the the other club manufacturer wins, um, or you know, you're gonna say that that you're the you know, I hit this club, but I'm the other guys. I'm the I'm the the that, title sponsor is that was else. the trick at the end of. That was a trick at the end of every world long. That was the, that was the thing like, you know, Oh, this guy hit this company and then, Oh, now he's hitting Callaway. It's like, yeah, wait, they, they gave him money guys and equipment and probably a contract for a whole year. And, you know, so I understand that part as well. Um, Yeah. You know, but yeah, I mean, I would say, um, you know, that, that kind of leads into, uh, you know, just somewhere that, somebody that can find value in what we're doing. Now, there's some things that we're working on right now as well that deal with, um, you know, pro-ams and, and, and partnering with companies to provide an experience to some of their executives or top salesmen, um, right. things like that. So we're working on some of that stuff um, that I think will, will help. But, um, you know, one thing that, that gets missed a lot is that a lot of long drivers do things that help raise funds for charities. Right, and that's yeah. that's another aspect that we want to incorporate is is the charitable component, um, because a lot of people, you know, if if you're doing something for a good cause, there are people out there with money um, that are are willing to to throw some money at it right. as long you know if it's if it's helping a cause, then they're all about it. But I I've got some, you know, some friends that are very well off and very good hearted, you know, and they, they donate a lot of money and do a lot of things. Um, but they enjoy being around the players. They enjoy right. playing in a pro-am and, and things like that. And so, you know, that's something else that we're working on. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stuff we're working on. We have a lot of plans and we're, yeah. you know, hopefully COVID will, will take a hike and get out of here and, and, uh, and we can get back to, right. to being with people a lot, mm-hmm. interacting and, um, I think that that will help. So, I mean, charities have suffered tremendously this last year. Right. Um, we do a, an event with JDRF and uh, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. And a lot of their fundraising events are like walks and fun runs and things like that. Well, you, you can't, you can't go on a walk with 15,000 people right now yeah. down the street. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, they're, they're scrambling uh, to do things, but anyways, yeah. So we, we feel like that's something that we want to do as well as be a part of communities and, and try and do some uh, 
some payback. One, one of the best events um, is uh, the event in Memphis, Tennessee. Spencer McDaniel puts that on. And one year, uh, it's called the Bluff City Shootout. And, and one year, he made it, he had an arrangement with St. Jude's Children's Hospital at, where we could go and do a tour. And uh, you learn about something like, like St. Jude's and how the patients there and their families are not expected to pay anything for that treatment. I mean, the goal of that facility is to provide the absolute best care at zero cost to the patients and their family. Yep. And, uh, you know, something like that, like how can you not get behind that? So I, I just think there's so much we can do with Long Drive um, that's positive and we, we want to be a part of that. So, yeah. Yeah. The tenant, I guess that was a Tennessee shootout was started off of, I don't know if it was that, that was the same event or not, but there was a, a Bart. Yeah. I Bart Hartzell. Bart Hartzell. Right. Yeah. Cause he, I remember yeah. back in the day, they, it was just all directed towards the hospital and they had like, you know, tremendous funding and it was, I mean, they donated, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of years. So yeah, I am. I, um, I think that's an, a very admirable thing. And, and that's the, you know, the part of it, you don't really know what people go through and, and all that. And if you can go out and hit a golf ball and make someone smile and they give you a little bit of money, that's, it's great. You know, it doesn't get any better than that. So, um, but uh, yeah, I'll, um, I'll put all the links and everything in the, uh, in the description and I'll put, you know, like I said, there will be some information on this screen. Um, through the editing process, but uh, is there anything else you want people to know or? I, I would just say, you know, in closing, um, the, the whole point of long drive is to smash the ball. And if you like smashing drives, it, you gotta try it. And if you know yeah. somebody that can hit the ball a long way, um, a lot of people never even swing as hard as they can, right? That, that's one thing I've learned. People don't swing as hard as they can, so they don't think they can do it. But then all yep. of a sudden, they get you know. Think of like a pitcher in baseball, when uh, when a pitcher in baseball pitches their first pitch in the game, they've been warming up for forty five minutes, right? Mm -hmm. So players in golf don't do that. They roll out of the cart and uh, do a couple of dry swings and then and then hit a <laughs> ball, and they're not even close to warm up. Right. Yeah. So there's people out there. There's more people that can do this, and I promise you, you will enjoy it when you do it. It's just yep. fun. Everybody likes it. as much as somebody likes draining a 50 foot pop for a double eagle or, you know, that's great, but yeah, okay. there's just something different about <laughs> smashing a drive. Right. That is more, way more fulfilling than right. some dinky little putt. So, yeah. Anyways, yeah. That's my pitch for long drive. If you know somebody who smashes it or wants to smash it, you tell them, look up prolongdrivers.com and get started. Got it. Got it. So last thing is what are, what are the ages? So open and senior, what are, what is the uh, age range? Uh, so right now it's 18 and older. You have to be at least 18 to compete. Senior division is 45 and uh, ladies division is 18 and older. Uh, junior division, junior divisions to come in the future. And uh, we're looking at some amateur stuff this year uh, okay. at our world championship. So, perfect, so we're trying perfect, to accommodate perfect. as many people as possible, but but in general, okay. that's where we're at. So awesome. Awesome. Well, Ryan, I appreciate your time. Uh, I apologize for being a little bit late on this. Uh, you know, technology can be no, unfriendly sometimes, but, uh, Tell me about it. yeah, man. So, uh, Hey everyone, again, this is John at the bumbling Yeti episode number 30. Uh, again, I have with me, um, we'll say the former number one, uh, long driver in the world, uh, but we'll easily say top 15 and you can settle that on the grid if you'd like with whoever is going to disagree with you. I finished fifth in every comp competition last year. So, okay, good, good deal. So uh, again, this is Ryan respect with uh, professional long drivers association, right? It's the association not of yep. America. Okay. All right. So Ryan respect of professional long drivers association. Uh, you'll see their website below here. Um, and or go to uh, thebumblingyeti.com to find uh, this episode and more information on Ryan and the Professional Long Drivers Association, as well as all the links and everything to get to um, get to their website and get more information. Again, if you want to go out and smash the golf ball, um, 
you know, go try to knock the cover off of it. You never know. We've all, you know, you'll, you'll get there at some point, but Ryan, I appreciate your time. Um, good luck this year. Uh, if there's anything I can do going forward, let me know, reach out. If, you know, if you're having something in this area and you want someone to come out, I'll be more than happy to come out and interview people and put it on here. My platform is your platform. So feel free. And, you know, if Bobby wants to call in or any one of the long drivers want to do this, please feel free to send them my way. I'm, I'm a hundred percent interested in, and I'd love to have conversations with, you know, especially some of the newer guys. Absolutely. Thank you, John. We appreciate right. it. Yeah, man. Not a problem. All right, everyone. Talk to you guys later. You bet. You've been listening to the Bumbling Yeti Podcast. Have an idea for a future show or guest? Hit us up on our socials at the Bumbling Yeti or email at the Bumbling Yeti at gmail.com.